And here we are live today, New Hope Radio. Thank you again for joining us. Great to be with you live after being away for so long because, you know what, I, I like live radio is spontaneous. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, as we work with new technology coming out, we want to make the program interactive the best that we can. We want to make it where you can participate in the program. So we're going to try to take care of that in the new, near future as well. But that's why, don't forget, we're broadcasting not only on 1590 WARV on the AM dial, they're also streaming us at WARV.net, and you can get us on Facebook, New Hope Christian Church, Swansea, Facebook, and uh, we're there live too. So we're trying to come at you from all different angles. We're taking a look at a series of messages entitled, The Kingdom of Heaven is Like. And Jesus told a lot of parables, comparing, you know, things of everyday life to the Kingdom of Heaven, trying to get us to understand what heaven is like. And heaven, you know, it's a practical thing, and we need to understand what heaven is all about. Who goes there, how to get there, what it's all about, and that's what these parables do. So before I get into today's parable, another reminder, man, don't miss this, April 14th, 7 p.m., that's Good Friday, live outdoor passion play. We're going to follow the steps of Jesus on the last night of his life, from the garden all the way to the cross. It's going to be an incredible event, very powerful, live music, actors. I mean, this is going to be really good. I can't wait. And uh, mark it down. Bring a friend. Hey, bring a non-Christian friend. Believe me, even a non-Christian will get a lot out of this. So bring them. Mark it down. Good Friday, April 14th, 7 o'clock. Outside in our amphitheater, it's a beautiful place to put on a live passion play. It's so big, and there are so many scenes. So come on out, mark it down. We will be here. Okay? All right. Jesus is going to tell us today two parables of the kingdom of heaven. They're similar, and yet they're diverse. I'm like, hmm. I like it when Jesus says things that are similar, and yet diverse. Because... He knows how to give different meanings to that which appear to be the same thing. But he can give us different perspectives on it. Now, the parables that we're going to look at today have been interpreted different ways. The treasure, in one particular, the first parable, some people teach it as the treasure being Christ. Other people teach it that we're the treasure. Okay, so keep that in mind. Then the second parable, the pearl is the gospel, and yet sometimes people teach it that we are the pearl. So it's like, which one is it? Well, I'll tell you what, I've taught the parables both ways, that Christ is the treasure, that we're the treasure, that the gospel's the pearl, that we're the pearl. So you can read into it, they're similar, and yet they're diverse. And that's okay. We don't mind when things are like that. So today I'm going to bring you even another angle to understanding the parable. And the point that I want to make today is that the kingdom of heaven is worth buying into. And that's what we want to see today. The kingdom of heaven, instead of saying buying into, what we can say is that the kingdom of heaven is worth, here it comes, investing in. People make all kinds of investments. But there's nothing like investing in the kingdom of heaven. And that's the point that we want to make today. Okay? So, two illustrations Jesus uses, and they're different in the sense that, okay, one is found by chance, one is found by seeking. See, somebody found the treasure, and he, he, he stumbled upon it. Somebody found a pearl. He went looking for it. And they both refer to the kingdom of heaven. So let's pick it up. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has, and he buys the field. Now, that word treasure... You might be familiar with the English rendition of it because it's very similar to the Greek word thesaurus. 
and we get our word thesaurus from it. And what is thesaurus? It's a book of words. You could say that a thesaurus is a treasure house of words. Words are a treasure. And you know what? Only humans have them. No one has words except humans. And they can accomplish a lot of good. And unfortunately, words can accomplish a lot of bad. So the point is, this treasure is a storehouse of valuable resources. And this treasure was hidden in a field. Now, if this was just a pot of gold, would the man need to buy the field? If he found the pot of gold, he just might take it. I don't have to buy the field. After all, there's no name attached to the pot. It's like if you're walking down the street, you find a $20 bill, and it's on the sidewalk, and you're in a busy place. It's like, I don't know. Never find the owner. You can return it if somewhere if you think someone might come looking for it. But for the most part, it's like, it's just there. And this treasure was just there. But again, it wasn't a pot of gold. It was something else. Who knows how long the treasure was there? It could have been there for years and years and years. And I wonder rather, rather than being more of a chest of gold that was hidden in the field, I wonder if he stumbled, stumbled upon a gold mine. Maybe it was something different. Maybe it was a gold mine. And you, you know, you see, I would liken the kingdom of heaven more to a gold mine than a bag of gold bracelets. Because a bag of gold bracelets or a bag of gold coins is kind of limited. A gold mine, it's unlimited. And the kingdom of heaven offers that which is limitless. There's no limit. That God offers us in his kingdom that which is limitless. Think about it. You cannot exhaust, oh I like this part, you cannot exhaust the riches of Christ. You can't. There's far too many. There's far too much. So, in the parable, Jesus said, a man found this treasure, and when he found it, he hid it again. So, he found this resource of wealth, but he covered it up. Hey, maybe it was the entrance to a gold mine, and he covered it up so no one would find it. And then, from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has. <laughs> uh, I like this guy. He buys the whole field. He's like, man, I'm going to buy the whole field. Who knows how much more is out there? So he's not taking any chances. In other words, he wants everything, here it comes, that that field has to offer. He wants everything. I wonder how many even Christians want everything that God has to offer. I wonder. I wonder if some settle just for peanuts. Oh God, just give me spiritual peanuts. And you know why people settle for spiritual peanuts? And you know why people settle for just being saved and nothing else? Because they're lazy. That's why. They're just lazy. They love the world. But here's a guy, oh no man, I want the whole field. I just don't want this little treasure mine. There might be more. I want everything. So, whatever it was, he took steps to appropriate it. And that's the point of the story. Jesus isn't teaching about moral judgments. You know, he's not saying, well, this guy was moral or immoral because he's, he's buying a field and maybe the owner doesn't know there's gold there. It has nothing to do with that. What he's teaching about is necessity. The necessity to attain the kingdom of heaven. Because remember, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who found treasure hid in a field. The necessity to have the kingdom of God. It's a necessary thing. Those of you that are listening to Christian radio today, you know it's a necessary thing. But you know there are many people today in the world, they don't see the kingdom of heaven as necessary. They don't. It's like, eh, whatever. I don't need it. You know, we know the secular media, like, hates the kingdom of heaven. We know that. They bleep out references to the Lord Jesus when they interview people. And when people want to give glory to God, 
they edit it out and they bleep it out because they just, see, Satan's the god of the air. And I believe he's the god of the airwaves. So, you know, there's a lot of people, ah, it's not necessary. It's not a necessity. Let me tell you something. It is. It is a necessity. So, this guy, Jesus said, from joy over it, he's so happy that he found the treasure that he goes and he sells everything he's got. Man, he sells his clothes, he sells his boat, he sells his motorcycle, he sells his house, he sells it all, because he knows that this treasure is going to give him far more than he had before. That's the kingdom of heaven. It gives you far more than you could ever have on this earth. He abandons what he has, and notice, he does it with joy. It's not like... Oh, man, I can't believe I, I got to go sell my boat and my motorcycle to buy this one, this treasure. No, get take those things. Get rid of them. They don't measure up. With this treasure, I can buy two boats and three motorcycles. I can get a bigger house. You see, he realizes the value of the treasure. And the value of the treasure is greater than anything that he possesses up until now. That's why he's full of joy. Now, Let's get the background to this parable. Remember we said yesterday, Jesus has left the crowd. He went into a house with his disciples, and he's speaking directly to them for their benefit. So these are parables for the disciples of Jesus. That's what they're for. They're for his disciples. Okay? And he's speaking right to them. And perhaps these are parables on discipleship, on commitment, on going all the way with God. People need to understand that if I'm going to go with God, man, I need to go all the way. God's not looking for half-hearted people. He wants people that are in it all the way. Okay? So, remember we saw the dragnet yesterday? What did we learn about the dragnet? That the dragnet, it's what they need to know about the gospel. The dragnet is the gospel, and it brings people in. Oh, but the treasure, this parable is about the cost of being employed in the work of the gospel. It's about selling all you have and following after Christ. That's what it's about. Remember the guy, he found the treasure abandoned. And he abandoned all that he had, but he had great joy when he did it. And what happened? He bought the field. Jesus said he sold all his stuff and he buys the field. And he didn't say he bought any old field. He bought that particular field. That particular field. The field with the promise of the treasure. See, it's not about following any spiritual leader or any religious enterprise or any kingdom. Some people think, you know, it doesn't matter what religion I'm in, all religions lead to God. No. There's only one way to God and that's through Christ, and it's explained through His Word, and the lifestyle of those that want to walk with God is called Christianity. It's the only one. Christianity is that field. There's a lot of fields that people are buying to try to get to God. Ain't going to work. None of them get there. None at all. There's only one, and that's the one that Christ offers to us. Then in verse 45, Jesus said, again. In other words, disciples, get ready. Here comes another one. The first treasure was found by chance. This guy's just walking through a field. Oh, look at that. I see something shiny. Well, let me go see. And maybe it was the opening to a gold mine. And he just, oh man, this is good. I'm going to go sell all my stuff and buy this one. But now, Jesus kind of changes the angle and he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. Now, both guys did the same things, but they came across their treasures in different ways. This parable, the parable of the pearl of great price, it's about sacrificing the lower to obtain the higher. This guy did it intentionally. He went looking. He, like, it's like he knows there's something more to life than what he's got. 
Here's a guy that deals in pearls. And he says, I got a lot of nice pearls, but man, I know there's one out there. If I can find that pearl, I'll sell all the rest. And people today that come to their senses, they realize with all they have, they still have a void in their heart. And they find Christ. And Christ can fill that void. And it's worth sacrificing everything else to have Christ in their life. See, this is a parable that's spoken to the disciples because Jesus was preparing them. And, you know, guys, he's teaching them. We're talking here about laying it all on the line. This is real commitment. Will you lay it all on the line for the kingdom? Now, the disciples... They left all they knew and followed Jesus, right? You know the story. Um, when, when, when they followed Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible tells us that Jesus called Simon and Andrew to follow him. And what happened? Immediately, they left their nets and they followed him. He then saw James and John and the same thing happened. He said, come on guys, follow me. Like, boom, they followed him. Let's go. Let's get this thing done. Why? Why were they so easy to leave what they knew, to leave what was comfortable, to leave what was secure, and follow a man where the birds have nests and the foxes have dens, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head tonight? Why would they do that? Because they were looking for the things that made a better life, a greater life, a more purposeful life. These are the movers and the shakers. The movers and the shakers are those that want to live a more purposeful life. Those are the ones. Verse 44, Jesus said, Upon finding, oh, here it comes, one pearl of great value. He went and he sold all he had. He sold all the other pearls. He probably had a bag full of pearls. Because that's what he was. He was a, a, a merchant of pearls. He says, oh man, I found the mother of all pearls. This is the one I've been looking for. I can sell all the other ones off and I'm going to buy this one. Now, there are two ways of finding, but only one way of getting. You can find by chance, as the guy did with the treasure, and you can find by seeking, as the guy did with the pearl. But once you find, and it doesn't matter how you find, there's only one option. Abandon all hope of getting it any other way except by sacrificing the lower for the higher. Here's where it gets sticky. Here's where people begin to tune out. See, for those of you that are saved, some of you could have stumbled upon Christ by chance. You know, you weren't looking, but maybe a friend of yours witnessed to you or maybe you listened to Christian music or you happened to hear a message and it touched your heart and you're like, I like that. I think I'd like to investigate further. And maybe others of you, you were seeking. You were like, man, life stinks. I don't like where my life is going. I gotta, I gotta get God in my life. And you went seeking for God, and God showed up. So it doesn't matter how you find Him, but once you find Him, there's only one option. Are you willing to make the sacrifice? Are you willing to exchange the lower life the earthly life for the higher life. That's the key. That's what the disciples did. The disciples exchanged the lower life of fishing for fish for the higher life of fishing for men. The disciples obeyed the Lord Jesus. They forsook all they had. They forsook all that they knew. And they found employment in the kingdom of heaven. You know, it's quite an amazing thing what Jesus did. He took 12 men, including the Apostle Paul. And we know of the 12 disciples, Judas didn't make the cut. So we've got 11, but then we've got Paul. And they were used by God to change the world. I mean, here we are, 2,000 years later, and we're talking about these men. We're reading the letters that they wrote. Our lives are being changed. People are coming off addictions. Marriages are being healed. 
People are finding hope. They're finding value. Oh, why? All because of these men that, that exchanged the lower life for the higher life. And you know, it keeps going. See, for 2,000 years, people did that. For 2,000 years, since these days, since the days of the apostles, people have been exchanging the lower life for the higher life. And the world has been better off for it. Some of you have done that. Some of you, ah, I think God is waiting for you to do it. It's time to go and sell all that you have and make that great purchase. Make the purchase. Okay? So, the world has hope because of just a handful of men. But now look today. Now there's hundreds of thousands of us, millions of us. What an impact we can have. But our impact is based on are we willing to trade the lower life for the higher life? That's the difference. We have to remember that. That's what Jesus has called us to. See, come on, like the early disciples, who wasn't looking for the good life? You know, your career. You choose a career because you want a good life. Maybe you move into a certain neighborhood because you want a good life. You choose certain people to be your friends because you want a good life. Or you have certain hobbies to help you have a good life. They've all been chosen by you to try to attain a good life. And as time goes on, you discover your career is prosperous, your neighborhood is nice, your choice of friends is right, your hobbies are fun, and you're really enjoying all of these earthly things, and then something happens. You discover something that surpasses them all. Wow. Maybe you even knew that with all that you had, you still did not have it all. Because, oh, you were still seeking. And you know that, you, you say, well, I'm not seeking. I'm going to tell you something. You might not know you're seeking until the day you find Christ. And then you're going to discover, wow, I was seeking. Because I want Christ in my life. And we know the field and the pearl were purchased by selling all they had. And you know, here's the thing. You can make the same purchase, but notice the difference. God offers us through Isaiah the prophet. He said, ho! I'm glad he didn't say, ho, ho, ho. I would think, that's not Isaiah, that's Saint Nick. But he said, ho! Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. You see what God has done? God has made it free. He said, why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? Ain't that true? He said, listen carefully to me. Eat what is good. Delight yourself in abundance. See, that abundance can only come from God. God offers to us what we could never attain on our own. It's true. We can never attain what God wants us to have unless we get it from Him. The response always lies with us. God offers. He says, here it is. I'm offering it to you. But the response always lies with us. So, I'm going to leave you with two questions today. Two simple questions. Because it's good to walk away from a message thinking. And even better, acting. Okay? So, question number one. Have you found the great pearl? Have you found that pearl that surpasses all other pearls? Have you found the treasure that surpasses everything you've ever owned before? Have you? That would be the Lord Jesus. Now, secondly then, okay, if you have found that pearl or that treasure... Number two, what will you do about it? What will you do? Are you willing to exchange the lower life for the higher life? That's the question. Are you willing to step out of this worldly kingdom and enter into 
the spiritual kingdom, God's kingdom, where the riches of Christ can never be exhausted. Never. You can't exhaust them. You know, it's like a little goldfish in the Atlantic Ocean. And God would say to the little fish, Drink up, little fish, drink up. There's more for you than you could ever handle. And God has for us more than we need. And I'm not talking materialism. He's not going to give you six cars and three vacation homes and perfect health. He's going to give you resources to deal with the issues of life. He's going to give you peace and contentment. He's going to give you security in the storm. He's going to give you fellowship in your loneliness. He's going to turn on his light when you're in darkness. He's going to do the things that are far greater than anything you could get in the world. They're immaterial things, but they're things for the soul. We live life from the soul, and that's what God ministers to. He ministers to inside the person. So, I'll tell you what. Have you found the great pearl? What will you do about it? Are you living in the higher life right now? If you are, beautiful. Keep doing it. If not, today's the day. Today's the day. Like Jesus said to the, to the disciples, come and follow me. He's calling you today. Come and follow me. That's what he wants you to do. Walk with him. You know, when, when students walked with the rabbis, it was for the intention of becoming like them. So Jesus is saying, yeah, come with me to be like me. Follow me so you will take on my attributes and you will be like me and you will change the world just like I did. Okay, that's it for today, but we got more of the Kingdom Heaven tomorrow. Don't forget, April 14th, live outdoor passion play. Oh man, do not miss it. I would say bring a lawn chair. There are some places you might want to sit down and just kind of watch the whole thing. So bring a chair, be comfortable. And we're going to have a great event. Good Friday, April 14th, 7 o'clock. Thank you for coming along today. Pray for the program. Support us if you can. And I'll see you tomorrow for more of New Hope Radio.